Welcome to the Freedom Project podcast. The Freedom Project exists to make freedom in Christ known to each and every person we can reach and to encourage and dialogue with those who have already found freedom in Christ. Your host is Joe Weaver. Hello, friends. Welcome to Freedom Project podcast. My name is Joe Weaver. I'm your host today. I'm so happy to be here with you. Thank you for inviting us into your homes and your devices. We like to gather and uh, talk about our freedom in Christ and how our journeys look. We each have a different path to the Lord, and uh, we just like to encourage people about what it's like to be able to walk in that freedom. We're going to just take a second at the top of the program to ask you to like our, our, our channel, subscribe, share it on all of your devices. Uh, and, you know, maybe we can get this great word of freedom out to someone who's struggling in their path or looking for a way to the Lord. So I'm also so happy today to be sitting with Diane Vanderputten from CHRI Radio. Oh, thanks so much, Joe. It's great to be here with you. You know, I know how busy you are. Diane is a great uh, networker. You're constantly working in the uh, field for the station. But, and you've been there, what, 22 years, did you say? Yes, coming up to 22 years in June. You know, and uh, we'll just give a shout out right now and get uh, out of the way to uh, CHRI Christian Radio, who do such great work in the uh, Ottawa Valley and beyond area. So thank you for that and all your service there. But... You've got a heart for evangelism, I understand. I do. It's um, it's something that just burns within my my whole spirit, and uh, I know you and I've shared a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, God has been so good just to teach me and reveal things to me as uh, I've walked with Him. So, did you grow up in a Christian environment? Family-wise? No, I didn't. I came to faith um, actually pretty much on my own. I was, I let me backtrack. As a child, we attended a Catholic church um, on occasions, whether it was Christmas, Easter, weddings, right. funerals, that kind of thing. Um, but I had this burning desire for God, and I didn't understand what that meant. And even as a little child, I was writing um prayers to god really? and and just even asking for help to find words like i didn't know how to spell i was so young um but then god just took me on a journey as a woman a mother married two little boys and that burning desire for god was still there mm -hmm. so i and i even before anybody had even said these words to me i knew that i had a hole right here and that it could only be filled by God. Awesome. But my saying was, I didn't know how to get God. Right. And uh, then I, I discovered a little Christian bookstore in Orleans, and I bought a Bible, and I'd started attending a little Baptist church, um, but I still didn't know anything at all about salvation in Christ, nothing. I knew nothing. But I was sitting, reading my Bible one day at home in my living room, sun streaming in the window. I don't even remember what I was reading, but all of a sudden, Christ came alive to me. Hmm. And I understood that He was alive. And in that moment, everything within me just poured out to Him. And, and it was just a, a conversation. I just opened up and just like, it gushed out. And in that moment, I know that he met me and he saved me and he's been alive to me ever since. Well, God is so good. And that, those moments never leave us, right? I can God. see it, that oh, yeah. it always brings back that emotion. Yeah. Um, and God is so good and he'll come and, you know, we, we have a God that will find us where we are, mm -hmm. no matter where we are. And uh, it's, it's awesome that you were able to, we all have a different journey uh, mm -hmm. to get to the Lord, but that's what we call... Uh, a born again experience, right? And it's, exactly. it, it doesn't have to be flashing lights or smoke machines. It's just like you said, you were speaking to God, that personal relationship. Mm -hmm. So, how do you go from there uh, to to a place where you know we all have a purpose? The Lord, the Lord knows our purposes from the foundations of time, right? So, your purpose has obviously been to be an evangelist for the Lord. But how do you get from that? awakening moment to the place where because a lot of people aren't comfortable evangelizing so mm -hmm. did you have someone in your life that was a mentor to you or was it all holy spirit or 
Uh, for the Lord. longest time, it was just um, the Holy Spirit and I and my Bible. Mm. And uh, he taught me and mentored me and just, I, I had a journey to travel and it was a painful journey um, over those years um, because I had to deal, we all have to deal with baggage from our past, mm. right? So um, there was a lot of work that God did in me and just training me up. But I do have to say that almost right away, I started sharing my faith mm. uh, because, you know, when you've been given such incredible, uh, an incredible gift in Him, and I was excited. I mean, I think some people might have thought I should be locked up in a room, but… Um, <laughs> Often the case. <laughs> it, it was just pouring out of me, and I looked for opportunities. Um, so I went to a nursing home in the community and, you know, just put myself forward that I would love to be able to sit and visit with people in a nursing mm -hmm. home. And I brought my Bible and I went in and just sat and just chatted with them. And then if they would like me to read scripture, I would read scripture. And whenever there was an opportunity to um, just tell them about salvation in Christ, then I did. It's such an important message for our audience because a lot of people uh, believe that you need to have special, special talents t to do the work of God. But he just told us to go into the nations and make disciples. So it's just this ministry of presence almost, just being present for people. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's training people can get for evangelism, but when the Lord puts it in your heart, mm -hmm. it's really just, it's reflecting his image to other people. Indeed. Cool. Um, I read this book and it's Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. And it had um, a really positive impact on my, my perspective as an evangelist. Um, just in terms of, there's this one phrase and I, I quote this all the time. And Henry Blackaby says that if you truly believe that God exists throughout all time and space, then that means that God is at work throughout every moment of all time and space, all at the same time. So I would be so like worried for somebody that maybe I would interact with that day that they didn't know Christ and I would be trying to, you know, find the words or to, you know, maybe steer the conversation so that mm -hmm. I could share the gospel with them. But when I read that, um, I understood that I could ask God in prayer every day to show me where he's working. Um, and in so doing, then it's up to me to answer that call. Be obedient. That's right. To answer the call, step into what it is that God is already doing in people's hearts and minds and lives. And he would open up opportunities that are beyond my vision, my limited vision into, you know, that interaction that I'm having with somebody. Mm. So I took God up on that challenge and uh, I prayed it that very day when I read it. And it was probably, I would say three days later, I was at uh, the station and I never get to leave work early, um, but things were just lining up that I could leave maybe around three o'clock in the afternoon. And I was super excited about this. And then the phone rang and it was for me and uh, it was a listener that I didn't really know, but they were asking um, if I could spend some time with them that day that they could be at the station around um, like four o'clock. And immediately I thought of, you know, okay, God, I've, I've already laid it before you this day that, okay, whatever it is that you may be calling me to do. So I said yes, and they arrived at the station at four o'clock, and I met them at the door, and we sat in the entranceway, and she started just, you know, it was a, maybe the first minute of just casual conversation, mm -hmm. but then for the next two and a half hours, everything just opened up, and just all of what she really needed to talk with me about, about her life and struggle and so forth. Um, that we just spent that two and a half hours just in the presence of God and just ministering one to another and just allowing Holy Spirit to speak wisdom into her heart and life. So. It's such a good God, you know, God brought that woman to you, but also it allows you to see him working in real time. Yeah. And that brings encouragement to us to keep on going. Mm -hmm. So how did, you know, uh, how did this uh, union come with you and CHRI? Um, did that come 
about because you were on a path of evangelism or was it just a career opportunity? Um, It was very interesting. I used to work in IT consulting at a big company. It's an international company and they had a a branch here in Ottawa. So I worked there for seven years. And uh, I remember this clearly. I was off sick one day and as I was at home, God spoke to me very clearly and told me that I was going to be laid off and that everything was going to be okay. The next day I went into the office and I was laid off. And it it wasn't a surprise uh, because Mm -hmm. God had already told me. But in the office, we weren't allowed to share faith um, because, you know, obviously there's, you know, policies about that. But um, I've now been laid off, so I can share whatever I like. (laughs) And uh, as the security and then staff that, as they saw me cleaning at my desk and stuff, I had this group of people coming and following me through the office out to the reception area. And there was about maybe 30, 40 people there. And I got to present the gospel to them and tell them the God story that I was off sick yesterday, but God had already told me I was going to be laid off. So no, this is not a surprise. Wow, but he's given me, given me the assurance that he is, he is going to take care of me. So that began um, like another six months, seven months of unemployment. Um, but I was looking for work and volunteering um, actually at a soup kitchen just down the street from where we are right now. Um, and in that time, um, there was a, a woman's gathering at my church and it was at somebody's home. And I really didn't have the time because I was busy volunteering and mm-hmm. organizing things and looking for work. And But I just really felt Holy Spirit telling me that I should go. So I went. And this woman came in and she said to me, right to me, she said, Diane, she said, I just got this email from CHRI and they're looking for administration assistant. And I think you should apply. And it's like, well, that's just not what I do. It's kind of completely away from your field of expertise. Yeah, yeah, my field of expertise. But then also, I didn't want to work in a Christian environment because how am I going to evangelize if I'm working with Christians? Yeah, if it, it just didn't make sense. But I really respect this woman, and she's a prayer warrior, and she really encouraged me to step out and, and go for the interview. So I did. And uh, by the time as I, I did the interview, and before I got home, there was a message on my answering machine offering me the job. And uh, God's, I, a, God's a good planner. He's a good planner, but I, I have to be honest, I did uh, accept it reluctantly. Mm-hmm. I did continue to look for other work because in my mind is that this just does not use my, my spiritual gifting at all. Um, and I can certainly do the work and expand and, you know, and I've done that for 22 years mm-hmm. now. But in the moment, I just couldn't see how it worked work. But here's the, the fascinating thing for ministry I really believe that if you're called, God will equip you, Mm -hmm. but he'll also break your heart for the ministry that he's called you into. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, God had to break my heart for the station and just like pour out just just everything, you know, in tears Mm -hmm. in front of him. And... I know that there's been a lot of people praying for many, many years uh, for the station. So it's not just my prayer, but the station started to transform within a week. There was just radical transformation. And I just believe that God answers prayer and he positions people and brings people and sometimes transitions people out. um, But it's all for his glory and what it is that he wants to accomplish in every season of ministry. So God showed me that even though I'm working in a Christian environment, there is ample opportunity to witness and to... And that's what you do. And that's what yeah. you're known for. You network, you bring yeah. people together. Uh, we uh, we are at the Civic Ottawa Civic Prayer Breakfast with a table of people that I didn't know that you introduced me to that have now those relationships have grown and we all have a chance to, to uh, have impact in the community and show that reflection of Christ. And that's just a great thing. It's a wonderful story, and it's a, it's a big story. I know there's a whole bunch more, but uh, we try to pack things in. Uh, 
we like to give an appeal or, or a prayer or a wish for the people that are watching uh, at the end of the program. Um, what would you like to say to our audience today to give them a picture of your heart? Mm. Well, that's, that's an incredible um, question. So my heart beats for every single person that I meet that the first thing on my mind is, do you know Christ? And then if you don't, then there's ways and means in which you can reach out to Joe, to others in your network uh, to ask those questions. But then find a Bible and pick up a Bible and start reading in the New Testament in the book of John and allow God to just show himself to you and, and show himself to you through the pages of these stories that are actually historic truth. Mm. But if you don't, um, if you do know Christ, then my, my next thought and heart is for you is, do you know the victory that you have in Christ? And are you walking in that victory? Um, there are ample resources out there, including the scriptures, that talk about who you are in Christ. And um, I would encourage you to just delve into that. Just even Google it if you have to. But talk with people that you trust, that are, are born-again believers, that love God, love the Word, um, and then just ask those questions. And you can reach out to me as well in any respect. But um, discover who you are in Christ because walking in victory has fullness of life and joy and purpose. And God will use you exactly where you are, but he never leaves us where we are. There is growth and life in Christ that we are to do here on this earth as we serve him and love others around us. Amen to that. He'll never leave or forsake us. Amen. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, like I said, I know how busy you are to come in and sit down with us for a few minutes and share a little bit of your story. I'm sure we'll get you back some other time and uh, go a bit deeper into it. And uh, just again, uh, thank you so much. And it's just always a pleasure to see you uh, and how God works in people and to know that he's so so he's sovereign and that... Uh, you know, we just need to follow and he'll lead. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for having me, Joe. This is an absolute pleasure. Awesome. And thank you guys for uh, tuning in again and supporting our channel, The Freedom Project. Uh, thanks so much for uh, the comments. And, uh, you know, if you, if you have something on your heart, reach out to somebody that you know. Reach out to somebody that you don't know. And... Uh, Listen to that still small voice of the Lord and he'll lead you on your path to freedom and you will know a freedom like you've never experienced. Remember our scripture here is John 8, 36. If the sun sets you free, you shall be free indeed. We love you all. Have a great day and we'll see you next time for another episode of the Freedom Project Podcast. Mm -hmm.